Mushrooms are able to decompose even durable plastic fungi can be our allies in the fight against plastic waste. Australian scientists have shown that two common soil fungi can deal with polypropylene in a short time, achieving the highest degradation rate recorded in the literature. Researchers at the University of Sydney have experimentally proven that two common fungi, Aspergillus terius and Enyodontium album, can quickly break down polypropylene. A tough plastic used to make bottle caps, food containers and plastic packaging. It can take hundreds of years for polypropylene to degrade. And the two mentioned fungi can deal with it in five months. This is the highest degradation rate recorded in the literature, said Professor Ali Abbas of the University of Sydney. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, NPJ, Materials Degradation, so far. Scientists have found about 400 microorganisms that are somehow able to break down plastic waste. For example, one of the bacteria is able to cope with 90% PET, polyethylene terephthalate, in up to 16 hours. Among these organisms, in the eyes of researchers, mushrooms seem to be the most versatile. The enzymes they produce can cope with quite a large amount of plastic. It is also interesting that some of them are even able to break down the so-called perennial chemicals such as PFAS, but this rather slow process has not yet been sufficiently studied. In the context of plastic pollution, polypropylene is a big problem for us. This is a particularly hard type of plastic. But there are also ways to deal with it. In the context of the fight against polypropylene, two species of fungi turn out to be particularly effective. These are Aspergillus terius and Enyodontium album. Uh, Their the effectiveness in this regard was decided to be tested in laboratory conditions. A special meal was prepared for them, made of plastic. Of course, it had to be properly cooked first. The plastic has been exposed to ultraviolet light, heat or chemicals to Geos soften all over it a the bit. World. And also, uh, it was a simulation of natural conditions in which fungi encounter plastic in such a form that it becomes possible for them to attack it. The results of the experiment exceeded the wildest expectations. Of the samples given to mushrooms, 25% up to 27% of polypropylene were consumed within 90 the, days. The must All samples the were distributed after 140 days. It is also extremely interesting that mushrooms can cope with various forms of polypropylene, from granules to aluminum-coated polypropylene sheets. So far, however, it should not be expected that plastic-degrading mushrooms will appear as a finished product on store shelves in the near future. Since you took the helm at the net Scientists will 35 have to wait years for ago, a number more than 35 of tests, years ago. including those regarding the potential impact on the natural environment, the possibility of speeding up the entire process, as well as assessing the economic feasibility of such a project. Electric therapy. Electrical stimulation accelerates wound healing three times. A group of German and Swedish scientists have found a way to speed up the healing process of wounds. All thanks to the use of electrical stimulation. The use of this method makes wounds heal up to three times faster. For the organisms of most of us, even minor wounds are not a problem. Work. Because in most cases they heal quite quickly. However, there are people whose health condition makes such wounds extremely dangerous for them. It is primarily for such patients that the new electrifying therapy is addressed. Researchers from Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden and the University of Freiburg in Germany have developed a method that speeds up the healing process. They use electrical stimulation for this. Thanks to this, wounds heal much faster. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Lab on a Chip. In certain situations, 
Even minor wounds can be a serious problem for our skin, which it is unable to cope with. This applies primarily to diabetics, but also to the elderly, people with spinal injuries or those with circulation problems. As a result of their health condition, there is a risk that their wounds may develop into a chronic form. The probability of infection of such a wound is also higher. In extreme cases, this may even necessitate amputation. Especially for such people, the development of any innovative therapy that can accelerate the wound healing process is extremely important. And just such a method of treatment was developed jointly by Swedish and German scientists. It is, moreover, as it turns out, extremely effective, because thanks to it, healing lasts up to three times faster. And they did all this starting from the old hypothesis that electrical stimulation of damaged skin could be used to heal wounds. According to this assumption, human skin cells are electrotactic, in other words, and they can move in a certain direction if they are affected by an electric field. To illustrate the phenomenon of electrotaxis in laboratory conditions, if we placed such a field in a petri dish containing skin cells, their movement would cease to be chaotic and they would start moving in the same direction. The scientists decided to test this hypothesis experimentally. A special biochip was created, on which skin cells were grown, in the structure of which small wounds were then made. In the next step, one of these wounds was stimulated with an electric field. The results of this impact turned out to be spectacular. It turned out, as mentioned earlier, that skin cells supported in this way can heal up to three times faster than those in the case of which no stimulation was applied. According to the World Health Organization, one in 11 adults now suffer from some form of diabetes. Researchers therefore decided to check how effective their method would be in the case of this disease. First of all, any simulation of diabetic conditions in the case of skin cells grown on a biochip resulted in the fact that wound healing well, became incomparably that slower. Was judged by our state However, department. the use in of electric field support made these cells behave in this respect almost in the same way as healthy ones. Extremely promising research results resulted in a grant for further research. The plans primarily include an individualized approach to the patient, in which wounds would be scanned and then appropriate treatment would be selected for them. The Hakuto R private lander crashed while attempting to land on the moon. Japanese startup ISPACE made a bold attempt to land on the moon yesterday. However, everything indicates that the Hakuto RM-1 lander crashed into the surface of the Silver Globe. The controllers lost contact with the machine just before the scheduled touchdown, suggesting that the craft crashed. It seems that the mission, claiming to be a breakthrough for the private space industry, ended in failure. Communication with Hakuto R. The first private lander to land on the lunar surface, was lost moments before it was scheduled to land. Mission controllers admitted that they were forced to assume the worst, i.e. that the Hakuto R would crash into the lunar surface. The Hakuto RM-1 lander was developed by the Tokyo-based company ISPACE. The 2 meter and 340 kilogram device is a relatively small and compact lander by current lunar standards. This mission was to be the first commercial landing on the lunar surface. In addition, it would introduce Japan to the group of countries that have succeeded in this art, i.e. the USA, Russia and China. The White Rabbit because this is how the name Hakuto can be translated from Japanese, was launched into space on December 11th last year aboard SpaceX's Falcon rocket. After a four-month journey, 
6, the lander entered lunar orbit for a landing attempt on Tuesday. The descent to the surface of our natural satellite was to take place fully autonomously, and the company focused only on informing about its course. Unfortunately, everything looks like the Hakuto R has crashed into the lunar surface. The landing maneuver appeared to be proceeding as planned. However, just before touchdown there were communication problems. We've lost communications. So we have to assume that the landing on the lunar surface was unsuccessful. Our engineers will investigate the situation and then we will provide further information, said ISPACE CEO Takeshi Hakamada. It is true that during the long flight towards the Silver Globe, there were anomalies in the lander's thermal control system and computers. But the company emphasized in the announcements that it was able to solve these problems. It is currently unknown whether these contributed to the failure of the mission. In a communique issued about six hours after its scheduled landing, ISPACE said that during approach to the surface, remaining propellant reached the bottom threshold and the rate of descent rapidly increased shortly thereafter, suggesting that the lander ran out of fuel, causing the engines to shut down prematurely. Then the controllers lost contact with the lander. The Hakuto R mission was to be the first lunar landing by a private enterprise. The main goal of the Japanese company was to assess the profitability of commercial flights to the moon. Ispace's vision is to provide commercial services related to human presence on our natural satellite. So far, only the United States, Russia and China have managed to place a lander on the lunar surface. However, these were programs subsidized by governments. Ispace's ambition is to change that. However, they are not the first in this field. In 2019, the Israeli mission Bereshit attempted a landing on the Silver Globe, which ended similarly to the Hakuto R mission. Interestingly, the Israeli lander had thousands of tardigrades on board, which are some of the toughest organisms on Earth and could have survived the disaster. Two more American companies, Astrobotic and Intuitive Machines, are set to attempt a moon landing later this year. The Hakuto RM-1 lander was carrying a whole host of equipment belonging to both private companies and government agencies. Among them was Rashid, a small lunar rover developed by the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center in the United Arab Emirates. There was also a transformable moon robot, the size of a tennis ball, sent by the Japanese space agency JAXA and developed jointly with the toy manufacturer Takara Tomi, who created, among others, Transformers toys. Also on board were technology demonstrators and equipment sent by other companies. The company is already working on the second lander, M2. It will be similar to the M1 and is expected to be launched in late 2024. In addition to a set of cargoes from various customers, it is also expected to deliver a small rover developed by ISPACE to the lunar surface. It is to collect regolith samples that will be transferred to NASA under a contract awarded to ISPACE's European subsidiary. Scientists have described a spontaneous passing dance of passers-by. Crowds of people heading in different directions meet at pedestrian crossings, stations or stadiums. These people, like particles of matter in colloids or substances in some cells, spontaneously create traffic lanes. Researchers from Poland and Great Britain have just described the mathematical rules of this unusual dance in science. Layman may be amazed by how order emerges from a disordered collection of objects with each step. 
and fans of mathematics will additionally appreciate that in such unobvious circumstances lines from the family of conic curves spontaneously appear. Ellipses, parabolas and hyperbolas. Imagine a busy pedestrian crossing. Half of the people crowd on one side of the street, and the other half on the opposite side. Everyone wants to cross the road without crashing. It turns out that when the light turns green and people cross the road, they spontaneously create lanes. Sometimes there are more lanes, sometimes less. But generally they are parallel to each other, and to the direction in which passers-by are going. It's just that the person who is blazing a trail to the other side is followed by other people who are also going there. This observation has been known for a long time and reproduced in various versions of the experiments. And so, in 2021, the I Nobel Prize was awarded for showing that if passers-by stare at smartphones, the process of emerging such lanes is disturbed. A lesser-known experiment is what happens at the crossroads of two groups of people. Mathematician Dr. Carol Bachik from the University of Bath explains that this is the case at King's Cross Station in London. Travelers enter the station through entrances set at right angles to the exit gates, to which travelers leaving the station in turn try to get out. In this situation, traffic lanes also emerge spontaneously, but they run diagonally to both gates. Now, scientists led by Professor Tim Rogers of the University of Bath mathematically described in Science the rules of such an emergent dance of passes by in various other frames of reference. And they presented a mathematical analysis of how such lanes look in different situations. Dr. Carol Bachik mentions that the equations include, among others, crowd density, slowing down of movement by the pressing crowd, or sometimes random diffusion of agents sideways to avoid collisions. The mathematical description proposed by scientists can be used not only to describe the movement of passes by, but also particles in colloids or the transport of particles in elongated cells, e.g. nerve cells. Because even among particles that are not endowed with consciousness or the ability to plan, order can emerge spontaneously from the initial disorder. Thus, researchers have shown for the first time that sometimes lanes can spontaneously take the shape of certain characteristic curved lines. So if, for example, two groups are heading to exits located on two sides of the room, the traffic lanes will take the shape of a segment of an ellipse.